Hi. Do you have a manuscript? Two or many unpublished manuscripts? Do you want to learn how to self-publish on Amazon? Search no more. Just send me a DM on my WhatsApp. Let's get started right now. Hi. Yeah, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, the, a channel that is all about chemistry. Yes. If you're yet to subscribe, please just hit that subscription button right in front of you. You're staring at it. <laughs> so just hit it, please. Don't just come and view. Subscribe so you can get notification. You never can tell. No knowledge is a waste. Yeah. Most especially chemistry. It's applied in every aspect of your life. You might not know it. But if you really decide to listen, to follow all my teachings, you find out, that, especially my last teaching, you find out that chemistry is involved in every area of your life. Then, and for my returning subscribers, please, please, please keep returning. Don't stop. I'm so grateful to you. So, today's topic it will be an on separation techniques, separation of mixtures. Okay, let's get started. Over the horizon. Welcome back. So, like I said, today is uh, we are going to talk about separation techniques. How we are going to separate all these uh, mixtures we have been discussing. How we are going to separate them. Remember, I said if the mixture is not a chemical combination, it's a physical combination, whereby they can be easily separated by physical means most times yeah sometimes heat is needed too but the main thing about it is that they can be separated unlike compounds so we have 15 separation techniques we have 15 yeah uh, the first one is sieving sieving has to do with separating mainly solid particles of different sizes a sieve is made of a mesh mesh of a particular size i mean it depends on the mixture you want to separate it's made up of mesh mesh of a particular size each sieve in all the sieves are not made of a, a, a of mesh of the same size it depends on what you want to separate so that mesh when you now place that mixture that you are that you want to separate the smaller particle that can pass through the mesh will now pass through the mesh leaving behind the other particle of the main particle that you really the main substance that you really want for example for example this is a sieve this is a sieve yeah look at the mesh the mesh is so tiny very tiny this is mainly used for separating and very very tiny but for example now flour you know flour that we use in making bread cake and chin chin and all these pastries it comes with uh, some um some lumps you know and if you decide to use that flour like that it will not really give you what you desire so you use a mesh this is a smaller sieve of sieve of it you use the sieve and then separate the fine flour from this you separate the fine flour from those particles those uh, lumps will now be on top they will, they will remain inside this sieve while the uh, flour the smooth flour that you need will now be and uh, will now be passing through the mesh to enter the the to the bowl that you place the bigger lumps cannot pass through this uh, mesh then we uh, through this mesh 
So we also have another sieve, a bigger sieve. This is a bigger sieve, which the sometimes you want to. You can see the mesh. You can you can see the mesh. The size is bigger than the other one I brought. So what you want to separate must be able to pass through this mesh. The smaller particle must be able to pass through this mesh, leaving behind the bigger one, depending on what you, what you want to separate. Most mining industries where they mine gold and diamonds, they normally use a sieve to separate the, what they want to uh, mine. And also Gary Industries. Gary Industries use sieve to separate out the impure substances from the Gary before the Gary, before the it is now the pure one is now fried. Uh, so that's all about sieve. We have the second one, magnetic separation. you I mean you you are familiar with magnets. Once you bring a magnet and place it within a distance. Every magnetic substance will it will attract all the magnetic substances around. You know, it will, it will just attract all the magnetic substances around. It's mainly used for iron, iron materials. We now we, we use it in the steel industry to remove magnetic impurities from tin ore. Yeah, when you from tin ore. Well, you're refining tin, and then it has some impurities. When you now use magnetic impurities, when you now you place that magnet on top, you now all the those impurities will be attracted towards the magnet, leaving behind the pure substance, which you now use and then refine your tin. Then we use, we have the sublimation sublimation method. Sublimation is a substance where solids are heated, where when solids are heated, they change directly to the gaseous, um, to the gaseous, um, to gas. They change directly to gas or gaseous substances without having to undergo the liquid process. Okay? So some... Um, and substances like ammonium chloride and iodine they normally undergo this sublimation process so when you want to and um, purify ammonium chloride you can now use this um, um, sublimation process whereby you heat the impure ammonium chloride then the pure ammonium chloride which is the one that sublimes we now change to the gaseous and then phase and then it will be collected leaving behind the impure substance like uh, you will see uh, on the you will see uh, on the board as i drew it and and i explained it there in the diagram um, of the purification of the ammonium chloride okay this is the triple stand, and this is the Bunsen burner. This is the triple stand, Bunsen burner. This is the wire gauze, and then this is the impure, impure ammonium chloride. You know, ammonium chloride. Now, when just like I told you, ammonium chloride is um, it's, it's sublimed. It's used mostly for the purification of those substances that sublime like ammonium chloride and, and iodine. So this is the purification of ammonium chloride, how it is done in the lab. So where the ammonium chloride is inside here now. Okay? Now when the is heated up, this ammonium chloride sublimes straight from solid to gas. And then this is an inverted funnel which is used to collect the sublimate. The sublimate they congregate here. You can see this black spot. That's that the sublimate of the ammonium chloride. That's the gaseous form, the pure gaseous form that has uh, evolved. Now leaving behind this thing remaining here now is now the impure substances. The pure one has uh, has been has been sublimed. 
I have been collected. They're leaving behind the impure ones. So this is what is used. Trapers, you stand, you stand the trapper stand and then put the bottom burner under it. This is the white cause. And just place the the and the um, impure, impure ammonium chloride on a glass glass container and then you now start boiling it you know this is a watch glass you now start boiling it when it starts it start heating it sorry not boiling it start heating it when it is it's sublime the pure one is now collected as what's in it while the impure one is left behind so that is for the purification of ammonium chloride. Okay. So you've seen it. Um, yeah, you've seen the how yeah, and the, the purification of ammonium chloride. It can and the, this sublimation process can also be used to separate these substances, ammonium chloride and iodine, from other substances because other substances do not undergo sublimation. So when you now heat this particular substance mixture that you want to separate you want you now heat the ones that we sublime are the ammonium chloride if you, if ammonium chloride is contained there it will sublime if iodine is contained there it will sublime leaving behind the other substances that do not sublime in that way you have separated ammonium chloride or iodine from the other substances and then the last we will discuss for today is the uh, decantation. Decantation. Uh, decantation is used to separate a mixture containing solid particles and liquid. Yeah, a mixture containing solid particles and liquid. When you now leave the mixture in a in, in maybe a glass and tumbler or in the lab a test glass and beaker glass beaker the solid particles with which we separate there will be two distinct layers the solid particles will be the ones that are down while the liquid substance will now be up then you can use a glass rod you can use a glass rod to pour out that liquid into another container can be a test tube if you are using if it's, if it's something small that you a small uh, mixture that you're using or it can be a test it can be um, a beaker you know you now pour it into pour the liquid into the beaker leaving behind the solid particles in the other one it's not really a very pure method but because you know some solid particles will still enter the liquid particle we we to see and join the liquid but it's a, a method of uh, separating solid particles from liquid particles as and the diagrammatic representation is shown on the board uh, uh, this is the decantation the process of recantation like i told you a test tube containing a mixture of solid particles and the uh, liquid okay now, one standing, the solid separates from the, the liquid separates from the solid. It is something like this. One standing, one standing, it will be something like this. Solid will now be down here, and then liquid will now be on top. It will be a clear layer, a clear layer of solid particles, and then the, the clear liquid particle will be on top. This is the liquid. And this will be the solid particles. There will be a clear distinction between them. Okay? So, in order to separate this liquid particle from this solid particle, you now use a glass rod. You pour it, you, pour the, you tilt the test tube so that the liquid side, the liquid will be start pouring through the glass rod into another test tube. But when it's, it's not really a very pure method because even when you do it uh, practically in your house, you find out that some solid particles will still end up uh, joining the liquid. But uh, this is a, a, a way of separating solid and uh, liquid uh, 
particles. Okay. So this is the pure, the well, I'll call it the liquid filtrate that was got from here. This is how the process of pouring in this glass rod, this glass rod. Then it falls through here, and then the liquid filtrate is gone. So with this, we have uh, come to the end of this, um, to the end of this, um, today's topic. Uh, we we'll continue with other separation methods in the next topic. Do remember to subscribe, comment, and like. I know you enjoyed this. I will not ask you whether you enjoyed this. I know you enjoyed the lecture. So just give me a thumbs up. And then um, I want to use this uh, opportunity to let you know that uh, I'll be, I'll, I'll also have another uh, channel in my YouTube for an other and uh, lifestyle, lifestyle, social events, two life stories and, uh, and so on. So uh, as I, I channel as, uh, as I teach chemistry I will also be talking on other other social events. Yeah. So when you tune in, it depends on the one you want. If you're not interested in the chemistry, you also have the data of the uh, other and uh, lifestyle and other uh, other every other and uh, thing that thing that needs to be discussed and uh, it will be discussed and uh, in the other channel. I want to use this medium to let you know about it. So thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.